Hi there, it's Rick and welcome to this video on passive income versus active income for software developers specifically. So we will run through the definition of what is active income, what is passive income, and then we'll go on to some examples, benefits and drawbacks of each. All right, so let's have a look at what is active income. So active income is where you exchange your own time for a corresponding monetary value. So basically you exchange your time for money. So a set amount of time equals a set amount of money. That's how traditional sort of jobs will work. You will get paid an annual salary paid out each month. Freelancing works in a similar way. It might be on a day rate or it might be on an hourly rate, but there will be some measurement of time and then there will be a certain rate that's associated with that. Okay, so active income examples. We have got four of these. So the first one is a standard sort of career dev where you're full time in exchange for an annual salary. You go into an office or you work from remotely, work from home, and you're full time working for somebody else, a career dev, all the way going all the way from junior up to senior dev team lead, uh, tech director, CTO, whatever you want. Uh, you've also then got freelancers, uh, those, so they would again be actively working for a set amount of money per hour or per day. And similarly for consultants and mentors. Um, all of these have something in common, which is uh, if you're not actively working on it, or as I've put here, like actively running on the hamster wheel, if you're not putting in those hours, you know, days or weeks or months, then you're not going to get paid at the end of that. And that's quite different than passive income. And I'm not here to sort of say active income is rubbish and everyone should stop doing it. Uh, it's a good way to earn a reliable income and a reliable living. It's what the majority of the world does. Um, but I just want to raise your awareness of passive income here. So uh, the benefits of active income, if we look at these first before we get into passive, we have got things like, and, and these depend on whether you're full-time software dev or if you're a freelancer. So full-timers would get things like healthcare, pensions, and work benefits. Um, the freelancers wouldn't get that, but they would probably get a higher rate, you know, and then they can source that privately. Uh, with active income, you've got more of a routine. So it's like a more of a standard thing to do. And you go to an office and uh, you have meetings and you do your work, etc. you leave. And when you leave, you normally leave your job at work. You don't have to worry about it because um, you're just kind of paid to do your nine to five or whatever the hours might be. And you can just compartmentalize that and leave that uh, at the office door when you exit. And it can also be easier to visualize, right, I'm a, a junior software developer, I want to get to mid and that's the next thing. You know, everyone around me is trying to get to senior developer. It's easier to visualize the career roadmap as part of that. It's easier to visualize uh, the money that you're going to get. So if I put in these hours for this month, I'm going to get paid my salary at the end of the month. Super simple, right? And finally, a bit tongue in cheek, but it is easier to slack off when you're working full time. So ultimately somebody else is paying you. And if you spend a couple of hours looking at some latest JavaScript, you know, platform or technology or framework on the, the internet for a couple of hours on a Friday afternoon, then that's not gonna harm you much. And it's not gonna harm the employer much. It's certainly easier to slack off when you're working full time. I'm sure we've all been guilty of that. Next, we've got the drawbacks of active income. So ultimately there is a time constraint. You can only work so many hours in a day. Uh, so if a freelancer, for example, has got an hourly rate, well, they're gonna be maxed out after eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, you know, and the performance is gonna be decreasing after, after that eight hour mark for sure. And therefore you sort of hit a paywall ceiling as well. So there's only so many hours that you can work in a day, a week, a month and therefore your income is limited at a certain amount. And obviously we then try and increase the, the value, the rate that we're gonna get paid for that time. And we might earn an extra few thousand dollars or an extra few thousand pounds, you know, um, in, a, in a pay review or pay increase or switching jobs. Uh, but ultimately it's not that great a sort of exponential leverage where we're gonna go up like this. It's just gonna kind of go up uh, slowly and probably not much more than inflation if it's like most people. We have uh, very underwhelming pay reviews, um, which uh, seems to be par for the course in software development. It's very competitive and it's difficult to get a really good pay review and a big like 10, 20% increase, unless you've been vastly underpaid. Um, but a lot of the time it's um, they're a bit underwhelming. And there is that huge reliance on your employer, just jumping back a point, 
So you have all your eggs in one basket with that employer and you're hoping that the business is going to work well and uh, they're going to be able to pay you on time. I unfortunately have been at the uh, wrong end of a business that went wrong and I was just working there as a happy uh, employee doing my development work and then one day he came in with no notice and he said sorry guys but the business is going under we're shutting down and that was it we were all left two weeks into a, a working month without any salary payments or anything like that and we just literally had to take our stuff and go home to our bewildered families like what are you doing um, so there is a, a big reliance on that single source of failure and uh, it's something that I've been very mindful of after that happened to me and the pain that I went through. Uh, we've also got sickness. So unless you're a full-time employee, you don't get paid if you're sick. So if you're a freelancer, consultant or mentor, uh, then you're not going to get paid because you're not actively working during that time. And that's one of the benefits of the, the full-time job is that people can just ring up and say, I'm sick today <coughs> and, and still get paid in full. And finally, we have got bittersweet holidays. So and I say bittersweet because it's like, hey, I get two weeks off or three weeks off a year to go and experience what life is like when I'm free and I get to go to all these places. And then you get put back in the hole and you're just working away. So you get a glimpse of what freedom is like. Um, but with active income, it's very difficult to have that over a long period of time. Whereas with passive, uh, you're able to be a lot more freer with your time. Alrighty, so let's get on to passive income then. What is the definition of it? So as opposed to active income, your income is no longer tied to the amount of time that you work. And instead, it's based on the value of the product that you create during that time. So if you built a digital asset, you're able to build that once, sell it to many people and therefore leverage your time and potentially earn a lot more than you could through active income. So let's just say someone would pay you $100 an hour you know, for a freelancer rate. And if you're able to build a product that hundreds or maybe even thousands of people could buy or even better subscribe to, then your hourly rate could be more like $200, $300 upwards. Um, and at the end of that, if you built up this profitable asset, you might also be able to sell that for a lump sum cash payment at the end of it as well and exit from that digital asset. So passive income isn't something magical where it's like, oh, it's completely passive. You know, you just uh, build it once and then that's it. It does require maintenance, it does require a lot of work at the start and there's no guarantees it's going to work. So it's not for everybody. But the great news is you can start this uh, on the side as a side hustle and then just start building up your skills and see what works and what doesn't learn from your failures and fail forward fail fast um, and, and take it forward um, as a side hustle and who knows you might be able to quit your day job like I did um, through passive income so some examples of passive income you, just some of the the main ones that spring to mind themes and templates so things like a shopify theme a wordpress theme a templates for websites those are sort of things that you would build once and you'd be able to sell them on envato or code canyon or some of those sort of marketplaces uh, you could build online courses and ebooks and you can sell those again you're building it once and you're selling it as a product to multiple people that will benefit from them um, there's my favorite one, Microsoft apps, and this is within the capabilities of all software developers. Uh, so those are small sort of niche SaaS apps, and they can be things like web apps, browser extensions, ecosystem plugins, mobile apps, uh, or desktop apps, but basically some apps that a narrow niche audience will love you for because you're solving a problem for them. And they'll pay you a subscription fee each month and you'll get this growing exponentially growing uh, income hopefully you know from this microsas app and that's predominantly what i talk about on this channel it's what i'm experienced in i built some microsas up to some point where i could quit my day job i'll link to a video where i talk about my journey on that um, and i scaled them up to a point that i exited for multi six figures as well so passive income benefits we have got time leverage as we touched on earlier so you're building it once selling it to many so that hour that you put in the day you put in the month that you put in working on it you might get a disproportionate income from that amount of work that you're putting in obviously if your product doesn't become a, a success then you might lose out that's a risk and reward with passive income but 
there's no way in active income that you can suddenly 10x your rate, you know, but with passive income, you have that ability, that chance to be able to work hard on something and fulfill um, the, the potential of your app and receive that subscription income and potentially a disproportionate income from what you're putting in. The other things you get are a lot of freedom, like unbelievable freedom when you, when I look back now and thinking about how I used to work in the old way for 20 years, there was very little time in the week where I was doing stuff that I wanted to do um, and I was being constantly interrupted, etc. And in meetings I didn't want to be in. And now it's just wild amounts of freedom. It's great and highly recommended. So time freedom, you can work on your app when you want. If you're a morning person, work on it in the morning, evening, in the evening, or like I did basically most of the day. Um, and it's asynchronous work. So you don't have to turn up at a certain time and be online and all that sort of stuff. You can uh, do the work when it fits in around you. So the other things are location freedom. So earlier uh, this year, a few months ago, I took a trip over to Egypt. And as you can see, that was a really beautiful place. And when I was working in a co-working space over there to refresh my mind and refresh my creativity. And that was through Microsoft. I was able to go and work over there. I was going snorkeling every day and it was a fantastic couple of weeks uh, away from where I'm normally working. Uh, technical freedom, you can work on whatever platforms and technologies that you want to work on. And then obviously there's a financial freedom as well when you've built up a subscription income uh, that's consistent and uh, that will allow you to do what I did, which was quit my job confidently knowing that uh, even if I didn't add new features, I'm going to have a certain level of subscriber income, you know, over the, the, the coming months. Okay, so passive income drawbacks. We have got the fact that there's no guarantees. So I could build a, a SaaS app thinking this is going to be brilliant. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. People are going to love it. And we'll have hundreds or thousands of subscribers in no time. And unfortunately, there's no guarantees for that. The best thing you can do is start small and just release early and often, get the feedback and adapt. Secondly, it can be a bit of a lonely, isolated experience when you're working on passive income products. Fine if you're starting off as a side hustle and you're just doing it at the evenings and weekends or whatever. Um, but full time when you're working on it, it can be a little bit of a lonely existence and you're working on this thing that may or may not be a success as opposed to just having that standard uh, reg regimented sort of income, go to an office, I turn up, I do some work, I get paid, you know, and the third point there is kind of linked to that, the fluctuating income. So there's no guarantees that if your product is seasonal, for example, it obviously could do very well for certain parts of the year and then drop off for others. And that's why I would always suggest you go for an evergreen product, uh, something that will always sort of be in demand. Um, even with uh, the apps that I produce, there's this fluctuating income where we'd have sales for certain periods like Black Friday, Christmas sale, a New Year sale, a Valentine's sale, and therefore your income was sort of spiky as well. So you sort of have less reliable income than you do when you're working in a, a day job, getting paid a, a fixed salary. So finally, we've got copycats. And in that case, that would be someone sort of cloning your ebook or the templates that you've worked on and claiming it as their own. Uh, in the SaaS app world, then somebody would take that concept and obviously they can't sort of copy and paste the code that easily, um, but they can create a competitive product to yours. So I've got a question for you, and if you can just leave your answer in the comments. So now you understand what active income is and what passive income is, what is it that you're working under currently? Is it passive or is it active income? I suspect a lot of people actually, the majority will be working under active income, a full-time job or freelancing. Um, and then I wanna ask you, what would you like to get into? Is it you wanna concentrate on active income and just scaling up through your career or increasing your rate and skills as you go? Or are you interested in passive income and really sort of being able to exponentially leverage your time invested? Okay, so as I said earlier, I really concentrate on passive income and microsas on this channel. I have this video on how to build a microsas in 10 steps. We just ran through some of them in brief. I'll link to that now. And if you want to learn more about microsas, then I have this handbook on my website. So after I'd exited, I basically wrote down everything that I could uh, remember at a high level, uh, the different steps uh, involved in it. And for some reason, I thought I'll just give that away for free. So that's there on my website. 
It's 12 chapters long, 100 pages, um, giving you a high level overview all the way from idea to exit with examples of what happened to me. So you can go and download that from the link below and it's just on my website. Okay, and finally, if you're interested in Microsoft's passive income, quitting your day job or Chrome extensions, then please hit the subscribe button because I'm gonna be producing more videos on all these topics in the coming weeks and months. So hopefully I'll see you around. Cheers for now.